Hello and welcome everyone. This is Dolly Garlow and I want to welcome you to another career transition story. You may recall that I have become known as the mid-career reinvention expert and that's because of my own uh, changes throughout the years in my own career but also because of the work that I've done with clients for the past couple of decades. Uh, people, experienced professionals, senior level executives who find themselves at mid-career disillusioned, frustrated, uh, ready for something different, maybe disappointed with where they find themselves, or who just aspire to something more, something different for both work and life. And so it's been fun to tell these stories other than my own. And today I have a wonderful guest who has an incredible career transition story I'd like to introduce and let you hear from him tell his story. His name is Colin McLeod. And so I'm just going to let you introduce yourself, Colin. Hi, Dolly. My name's Colin McLeod. I'm a former CPA and uh, yeah. I my career transition is now into fully into the field of music and yeah. um, connecting people with their passion and just just putting that bit of Scottish Celtic pizzazz into people's lives in a way that they can actually re-energize and just uh, go on and fully commit uh, to what they're doing to inspire the people who they like to inspire. So I think it's fascinating. Tell me a little bit about your career as a CPA. Obviously, you have a wonderful lilting accent that I love to listen to in addition to your music. So tell us a little bit about where you were when, you know, when you were this practicing CPA, what was going on? Well, I... Uh, went to Edinburgh University and studied economics and accounting and this was directly after school right. and um, when I, I was doing music at school uh, both classical and Scottish violin uh, the really on the outset of things at that time in Scotland there really wasn't a rosy picture of uh, people getting jobs within the music that uh, shall I say within the field of music. Right, so, so you were an artist who needed a day job, basically. An artist who thought I needed a day job, and there's mm. some, these, these two are very, very different. And, but if you'll notice that with the, the influence of the linear thinking, it's like just looking at something in one way, seeing only one set of possibilities, whereas actually there's a whole ton of opportunity and, well, there's a whole set of possibilities out there. It's just the way that we actually look at them. Absolutely. So, I have my own set of stories about that. I really appreciate you bringing up that point. It is so true. We think that, that we can only do one thing in one direction, and there are so many possibilities. Once we start to explore them, we discover them. So, so you, went, you got your CPA, you practiced in a firm, or did you have your own clients? Um, I, I started practicing in a firm, then I, I trained as a chartered accountant in Edinburgh, so working with different companies in the central belt of Scotland, mm -hmm. um, doing contract positions and really just sort of mixing in with the knowledge and having so many conversations with, different, with people with, from different areas of the companies. Yeah. And that involved working long hours. It also involved a lot of travel, maybe an hour one way, an hour another way. So at the end of the day, I'm looking at 10 to 12 hours in a day. Right. And my way, my, my way to recharge and sort of recalibrate was mm -hmm. to actually play music and go into the pubs in Edinburgh and just jam, just have a jamming session that might last two, three hours, sometimes four, depending on how intense um, my work in front of the computer had actually been for that day or what I was, you know, the, the picture that I was bringing together because very much my role was a connector and um, somebody might be off from, you know, one, one of the roles within the staff in the, in the accounting department 
um, the staff might be off on leave or off hill. And my role was to come in and just put everything together. And very, very often it was actually creating systems so that thing the, the, the company's backbone, the, the accounting admin could actually function. Mm -hmm. And people didn't so need to is, worry about anything. Right. So this is one of your skill sets that you eventually found, I imagine, was a transferable skill set. But you, uh, so you would use music, uh, I, and I and assume you started playing at a young age, started studying music, and then continued studying through your educational yes. process? Yes. I, I, started, uh, I started learning on the island of Orkney at the age of seven. And so very much music's always been part of my life. Right. And, and so I you've used it. it to recharge and to create somewhat of that, that what people might call work-life balance, to have a, a little way to um, get away from work and do something that you love doing um, to f sort of feed your soul while you will yes. work. Yes, yeah. and it's also been a way to sort of just almost like gather the information uh, that I've learned during the day and actually put some sense to it so that I can go back the next day, you know, and step up on the journey, you know, with, with what I'm doing so that I can actually come back in a productive way the next day, like just be at the starting line when, you know, for the beginning of that day instead of taking another... I don't know, half a day or just thinking, what am I going to do next? What are my next steps? Right. By, so it really kind of helped you recalibrate yourself and your thinking and and uh, recharge yourself for the work that you were going to do. Yeah, yes. that's really, it's interesting how, how the arts uh, really are important in that way, I think. And, and, and those are very, very interesting intangible skills and it's something that you know might not sort of be readily readily visible because when we look at things um from say from an accounting perspective it's dollars it's numbers mm -hmm. well part of the output and before anything can be created it comes from the idea it comes from the vision so if our vision is based on one side of the brain the left hand side of the brain then it's sort of going to be a very very linear thinking dominated outcome output which is you know with very little creativity correct yeah and so at some point Colin all of this became more and more clear more and more important to you and you reached a point where you were ready to make a shift tell us about that time well I think the shift probably came in my late 20s after I was sort of finance manager with an organization and with a with a company and you know after working like 80 hours a week mm -hmm. and it's like uh 80 hours a week probably for about 18 months and it's like what where's my life where's right. what what's happening and it's and so what i did to slightly change that was to go and do a part-time mba at a strathclyde graduate business school one of the universities in glasgow as a way to start transitioning out of a purely accounting role. Now, this is something that has been a recognized way for accountants to sort of start breaking out of the mold. Sure, it's, it's, a, it's a, a path that a lot of people take. They say, hmm, okay, I have no life, I'm working way too hard, I need something different or I'm dissatisfied, I'll go back to school because I need to go back to school in order to change my life and 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 for a lot of people on their way to that mid-career shift where they they are ready to just do something different that's i mean that happened for me too you know I, my shift was from nursing to law so i went back to law school and uh, thought that that would be the answer so how did that work out for you getting your mba so i was always doing contract positions so I kept the accounting going full time as well as doing the part time MBA. Mm -hmm. And what I found was I was working nearer to where my place of study was over in Glasgow. So I didn't have to travel backwards and forwards to Edinburgh so mm -hmm. much. So the the outcome of that was that I I tried different organisations. You know, thinking I've got this MBA now, and 
look look at what I've got, look look at what I can offer. But again, very much, I think there's still organisations. They have their own way of doing things. They have their own views of where where they want their staff to be. Mm-hmm. So. At the end of the MBA, I'd finished the MBA and I'd also finished the contract. And there was an opportunity, there was a possibility of going over to, I hadn't had a holiday in three years, you know, just working all the time. Right. Fact, probably a bit longer. So some friends from Edinburgh and Australia said, hey, we're over in Australia now, come over and see us. So I took a two month break, so we can say my first two month sabbatical just yeah. at the age of 30 and went over to Australia and just had the time of my life, you know, doing a road trip from Sydney up to Cairns over four weeks, leaving the petrol cap off in Sydney before we'd even started the road trip, doing cross country skiing in the snowy mountains, crossing the river, crossing the wow. snowy river in bare feet, oh scuba diving in the, uh, the, the, great, the, barrier great, reef. the great barrier reef yeah. and, you know, doing all these different things like, that I would only have ever dreamed of, even going and seeing something in a, a concert in the Sydney Opera House, or wow. being one of the first people to actually do a tour across the Sydney Harbour Bridge, one of the first people. You know, so it's like people just accept me on face value, whereas in Scotland, because Edinburgh is a more reserved um, mm-hmm. city than Glasgow, and it sort of it takes longer to know people, and you know, life is really too short. Mm-hmm. And so, I ended up buying a violin in Australia because I wanted to give something back special from me because Aww. of just such an awesome time that I had. So I ended up doing a concert in the cave. I think I've still got a photograph of it somewhere. And then I had all these fabulous experiences. And after going back to Scotland from Australia, I was like, I was changed. It's like the seas had parted. Or and my outlook had grown, you know, first time flying a 27 hour flight from one side of the world to the other. Travel can be very, very opening. Um, extremely, yes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just seeing what people have done, are doing on the other side of the world when they had actually left a country and mm-hmm. looking at what's being created, the lives that people experience something different something that's out with the norm and and i'm just curious how did they respond to your music did um, that have that have an influence on your thinking about moving in a new direction where there was an affinity perhaps with a scottish connection or where some of the family had actually been over to scotland you know then there was there was a People really enjoyed it. People really enjoyed the experience anyway. And it also broadened my, my horizons. I um, bet. And I, bet. Um, I was back in Scotland. I went back to Scotland after that. So this is just before 19, no, just before 1999. And right. The happened, turn of the new millennium changed things for a lot of people. <laughs> well, my, mine actually started when I came back because I worked for a company it was another contract position. So I'm living in Edinburgh and the parent company, the Scottish company, it had actually had a South African subsidiary. And the, if something wasn't done with the South African subsidiary company, which was based in Cape Town, then it would have brought the whole group of Scottish companies down. Now, mm. this, this was a company in Scotland that was very much an early competitor to eBay. So it was set up by a Scottish entrepreneur and mm. his son. And, um, you know, so it's like, Holy smoke! This is we've got. Look at look at what's look at the different environments that um, I'm now being exposed to, so to speak. Right. This is what I was telling myself, and so within about two weeks, I was asked if I go to South Africa and Cape Town and actually be, you know, be the finance representative from Scotland to help this company to stabilise this company in South South Africa and just to sort of let it adapt to the new environment because the business plan had been done when it was very much the pre still in the apartheid era and during the first couple of years that the company was set up the political environment had changed in south africa and that had a knock-on effect in terms of the the pound to rand exchange rate and that so the business plan for the company had been set up 
and all of a sudden it was uncompetitive. You know, the company was uncompetitive with the, the way they were pricing right. their business, the products from the business ideas. So I went over there and it was like, holy smoke, the business got robbed twice. Um, I did a bungee jump, 200 meter bungee jump from Storm River. It's like th this, this different environment where I'm still doing the accounting, but I'm having to adapt because people, some people are used to the environment. The, 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 the companies, the, the environment in the company is changing sorry in the country's changing and it's and people are still adapting you know to the transition Nelson and i Mandela. suspect you're starting to see how much you enjoy living and working in different environments well if i said that um i went out and bought another violin and um, joined <laughs> in some of the this time i made my first cd in in cape town which um not many people actually know about but it was, it was more a gift to give to people who had really helped me you know in that environment because the team at the company was very strong and the friends that I made out with you know in in the environment like um having a music session in a coffee shop rather than rather than a pub because somebody had been thrown out of the windows <laughs> in the pub so they decided to go to a quiet and it's like what would you like to drink this evening I'll have a strawberry milkshake please <laughs> and but the, the the enthusiasm, the the, mu the music, the creativity, you know, and getting exposed to some the the musicality of the African South African rhythm, of the the white mixture as well, and just all this musicality coming together from the different cultures, even mm -hmm. from from the Netherlands, from the, from the Dutch influence, and from the UK influence, and you know, it's so so rich and. Even just going out and playing in different gigs, like imagine me playing Celtic music in a heavy metal bar. Well, I did you know, in the biker's bar. Yeah. And it turns out that the guy who owned the place, his mother was from Edinburgh. So, you know, it's like it's seeing, it's being out of the comfort zone, seeing what you can actually do, seeing what the possibilities are, and remembering that it's teamwork, it's not just ourselves. And that, that was, you know, it was such a rich environment there and I actually went back um, a year later. And where um, did you, so you played your violin there. Yes. Uh, again, as a gift. And I think that's, it's really interesting uh, a realization to have that this is a gift that I have that I can give away, that I can share with people. And at some point, those realizations morphed into what you're doing now and I so I'd like to just explore and you know, have you tell a little bit more about what it is you're actually doing now because you have an, a new business that's your own that's about giving this gift and helping others give this gift in their own way and that combines this experience that you have of being able to work anywhere and and to travel and do your work as well so I, I think it's just a really fascinating story how all of this experience has now culminated in what you're doing now so tell us a little bit about that transition and what you're doing now well about um three years ago i joined a business group um which i think that's how we met dolly and um, right it was focused very much focus on speaking uh, speaking as a tool to uh, grow your business. So the previous, I emigrated to Australia around about um, 2004 after a dip in the water with some backpacking and working in Australia 2000-2001. I had my own accounting practice and I was devoting half the time to serving my clients and the other half to growing a music business. But what I didn't realize until now or is just how much sitting behind a computer and again long hours behind a computer it, it's just it takes so much to move from the head to the heart and mm. so if we say for two weeks in a month I was behind a computer doing the, the, the accounting um, it would take me another week to sort of get out my head to the to, to be in my heart and if I look at things, it's only a week, a month, a year. 
it's only a week a month, you know, that I'm giving to growing music as a business. So music still is um, a hobby rather than taking right. it seriously and as a business. It's, so it's still calling to you to do something else with, and you join a business mastermind to try to figure out how to grow that side well, of the business. Go from A to B. So for right. about the next three years, I was flying backwards and forwards from Australia to the US roughly every three months. And partly that was to, I could keep in contact with family, but it's also, I had a vision of being able to operate on three continents, Australia, the US, and Europe. And, and operate how? Doing what? Um, virtually, so through my Celtic Fiddle Academy, and which is, is up and running, it's, it's there, it's the Celtic Fiddle Guru Academy. Yes, and, and tell us where you are online so people can, can find um, you. So if they go to Celtic Fiddle Guru, G-U-R-U dot com, you'll find a link to the academy there. Celtic and Fiddle Guru. Mm -hmm. Yes, and CFG. CFG is Celtic Fiddle Guru, but it's also GFC backwards, the global financial crisis. So when we go back to 2008, 2009, we start to see where I was seriously trying to work out what can I do to bring music more into people's lives and because from the richness and from the just absolutely just absolutely fabulous adventures that i'm having with music and how much it's inspiring inspiring for me and it's just the, the insights are amazing absolutely and i think that you know what's interesting to me is that you went also with your music from a one-to-many model, you know, we talk about one-to-one uh, -one delivery, then one-to-many. You were doing one-to-many because you were one person playing for many people, but you've actually moved with your academy into more of a many-to-many -many model so that yes. other people can do what you're doing. And I, I'm just, I want to first of all, um, have you explain what that is, like what you actually teach them to do. And then I'd love it if you would just give us a very short demonstration of your music so that people can hear what you do. Yes. Um, so I, I one of the things that I do is to teach people Celtic fiddle, depending on where they are. Um, they might be picking the violin up again. They might want to, they might play the bagpipes. Um, and they want to maybe learn more about this style of violin playing because this style of violin playing breeds creativity, empowers people to move countries and to have friends, to be able to grow a base of friends through a, going to Celtic music sessions. Or it's also a way to char, recharge if you're moving country with your job or with your family. And, and um, how does it do that? Because of the style of music that it is, and um, you can play, sit in with different can, people or play with other kinds of music. You already have been saying that you've traveled around and played in different settings than you, you know, whatever have thought you would. And Absolutely. So it's, it's a way to, where humans are very social, we're very social people. Mm -hmm. And... So when we go somewhere different, it's like, what can I do to settle in a place? Or what, I can, what can I do just to sort of like feel comfortable? So you can join in with a local music session because the same music that I learned in Scotland, that I grew up with in Scotland, is also in Australia. It's in the US, in fact. It's actually in most, probably every country in the world, even Japan. Right. Um, and, and I've traveled with you a little bit because we did do that business uh, mastermind together. And so I've seen you just walk into different settings and say, you know, may I give my gift of playing music here and how you gather a crowd of friendly people around you. Yes. And if I think back to me, 2016 at Paradise Point in San Diego, it was awesome to have the conversation with you about you seeing the potential in what I do. And that was one of the first videos I did to actually promote my Celtic Fiddle Academy. Yes, I remember standing on the dock, holding up the video camera while you played. So let's do that again now in a different setting. Can you so, just yes. give us an example? Oh, 
that's beautiful. And so that's a sampling of just a tiny fraction of your repertoire, because I've seen you play many different things, but such beautiful, beautiful music that really does speak to the heart. Thank you. And I mean, over a year ago, I played over Mount Everest in a plane at 33,000 feet on a recent trip to Nepal. And August um, 2017 was also playing for the uh, Sumatran elephants in the Sumatran jungle, playing them jingle bells or jungle bells, I should call it. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's all these different experiences, but it, it's almost like the, the comfort zone is extended. You don't even, there's not even a comfort zone there anymore. It's, it's, it's just a way to go out and meet people. It's a way to have conversations. It, it's, um, it really brings both the left and the right hand sides of the, of the brain together. And just and so this is themselves. now what you teach people to do, and you can you do it virtually, you do it um, in in different ways. They can apply it socially, they can apply it for business, they can apply it to rekindle their own love of music. They can pick up the violin for the first time yes. and learn, right? Yes, uh, and it's a way for people to just be themselves and just have fun and. Um, Re reignite their passion for what they want to do for life. Well, Colin, thank you so much for today. I wonder um, if you might say just briefly two things. One is, as you were making this shift uh, from your full-time financial work or then part-time financial work to full-time music, what were some obstacles that got in the way, or not in the way, because obviously you've kept going, but that showed up? Because I, one of the things I teach is that it's not if, but when they show up, because they will, and what you do about them. So could you speak to that just briefly? Um, I think probably one of the main obstacles is actually getting out of my own way. Mm. And, and what does that mean to you? Um, perceptions about what is what is possible, what are the possibilities, and they're actually a lot greater than we think. I mean, like the conversations with yourself, Dolly, it's, you know, they've opened up my sets of possibilities, and then from there, I've taken them to different levels and further conversations, and I'd say that we can't do this ourselves. It's like, you know, take on board things because at each level it's a choice and then there's a set of possibilities and it's really being open being open to possibilities and knowing that there is a next step mm -hmm. and it's it's the you know uh, and it's the, the, the each teacher or each mentor has strength in the backgrounds that they have and I've been very lucky with the number of teachers and mentors I've had over probably over my life but especially over the last three years when making and making those changes yes mm -hmm. and very much it's it's as much to do with the inner view outwards rather than just remembering if you think you can you can and yeah, it's absolutely. and it's it, it, it's looking outwards it starts with looking inwards in order to look outwards but just remember you know people are people have the best of intention to provide insights and it's from where they've it's from where they they've come it's from their insights based on their experiences which are different from mine that's mm -hmm. that's where the richness is but i also have my own journey to you know to, to go on and it's sort of like making the, the choices from the, the range of possibilities that are available and you just just realize it's such an enjoyable life that we have and the conversations and talking with other people having the conversations and be open to insights from each conversation just be open mm -hmm. and any words of wisdom that you can think of for somebody who's reached that pivotal mid-career point where they're thinking about something else 
what's next, a new chapter, making maybe a significant change, maybe leaving one thing to pursue another, maybe aspiring to something that they've only dreamed about. Take the leap because there's people who have been there before and people who can help you, like yourself, Dolly. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'd say is, you know, I mean, if people want, I'm happy if people want to reach out and speak to me, Colin at CelticFiddleGoo.com. Um, but I'd say just know that you can, know that you can, and know that there's all these possibilities just waiting. Yeah. And it's an iterative step of fun and trepidation, um, lifelong learning. And it's, it's, this, is, this is for the rest of your life. You know? Yeah, and, yes. and it's like you said, because this is something that I say a lot. It's part of my own story, what got me to where I am. Life is too short. Go for the gusto, right? And so if you have an interest in Celtic fiddle, in music, in rekindling music in your life, I really encourage you to look at CelticFiddleGuru.com and the Celtic Fiddle Academy with Colin McLeod. And if you have an inkling to do something to change where you are at mid-career, make a transition to something else, I'd invite you to have a conversation with me because I would love to help. So thanks so much, Colin. It's been a fascinating conversation. Thanks for playing for us, even if that was just a tiny sample. I know how wonderful it is, and I can't wait to see you again and hear your music. Thank you very much, Dolly. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.